And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out, gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. 37, all right. So, the Lord Jesus, where is the Lord Jesus at verse 37? On the cross. On the, on the cross. On the cross. Now, just since you're a lot of us, when you want to talk, raise your hand so we call on you one at a time so we know who's, who's ready to go and we can take our turns. Okay. He cried out with a loud voice. What does this last expression mean? What does this last expression this first mean? Yeah, Barbara? Actually, it was a physical impossibility with the type of what crucifixion did to you. You couldn't breathe. That he called out with a loud voice was absolutely nothing more than miraculous. Mm -hmm. And what does the last expression mean? Gave up the ghost. He died. Raise your hands. He died. He, he did. Now, is that possible? Is that, is that what happens today? Yeah, Henry. He had the power to take his own life, mm -hmm. like he, he gave it up himself. That's right, but normally, God tells us, unless there's suicide, which is certainly not Christian in any way, but uh, we normally wait till we die, we just, we just wait and die, but he took his own life. Remember it says in the other parts of scripture, my life no man taketh from me. I have power to take it from me, to lay it down and take it again. So I have the power to take it again, when does this taking again take place? After he risen? After resurrection. After resurrection. Yes, Barbara. Okay, so uh, that's an important thing. As perfect God, perfect man, he had the ability to do this, and he gave up the ghost. In other words, he took his own life. I remember we said this morning about the curse of being on the cross overnight. They had to take down their body beforehand. So when they remember they came, we said this morning, came and broke the legs of the Thief on the right, thief on the left, they killed them, they died. Then they took them off. But when they came to Jesus, did they have to kill him? No. Yeah. You know, because he already taken off his... Yes. He's already, he already he gave up his life and dismissed his own spirit. <clears throat> so none of us have the power to do that. We can't just say, all right, I want to die. It's not, it's not a power, see, but being perfect God, perfect man, he could do that. Then in verse 38, what happened after he died? Yes, Barbara. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and it's significant that it was from top to bottom because this thing was 18 inches thick and 60 feet tall, mm -hmm. and it took 40 yoke of oxen. In order to be hung in the first place, it took 40 yoke of oxen mm -hmm. to try around the perimeter to try to pull it apart. So this was, right. this was a miracle, too. So what was the temple? Where was the veil in the temple? Where was this veil? Yes, sir. At the window? No. In the temple. But where in the temple? Between the holy okay. of holies. Yes, Vaughn. Between the holy and the holy of holies. The holy place and the holy of holies. And the, who could go in? Yes. Is that the altar? No, no, that's in the holy, holy of holies. In other words, how many compartments were there in the temple? That's, that's the two, the two. Holy, the holy, holy. Right. holy of holies. Holy of holies, the holy place and the holy of holies. What was between those two places? You don't count yeah. the curtain, the heavy Pardon? curtain. You don't count the courtyard. No, no, I'm talking about the actual temple. <coughs> the place. Oh, yes, uh, Antoinette? I was going to say it's the place where <coughs> the high priest could be. How no often? How often? How often? Yes. That's a good question. <coughs> yes, Sue. Once a year. year. Just once, once on the day That's of right. atonement. That's right. Only once, the day of atonement. All right, now, Fanny, you had a question? No, I'm scratching my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see that hat, yes. The Day of Atonement, is that the day you're supposed to forgive their sins or something? Well, that's when the offer was made in the Old Testament for sins of Israel. That's right. The, the, yes. That's sins of Israel. Uh, so the, when the <coughs> veil was rent, what did that signify? Yes. Rent? Yes. It's torn. So what did that signify? Yes, Bar uh, Tammy. That the way of the holies was now open. Now open. Before, one of the high priests once a year could go in. How many times did it go in that thing? <coughs> um, one once. Just once? Now oh, be careful. How many times did he enter? Only once? Ask the After that. Well, once for himself. That's right. And then once for the people. That's right. How many times does that mean? Twice. Twice. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to clear things up. All right. So, that read, as Tammy said, that gave the idea that no longer just the high priest once a year could go into the holy place of God, into the presence of God, but 
Every born again Christian, saved, genuine Christian can go into his presence anytime, any place, anyway. What about those that are not genuine Christians? No. Can they do that? No. no. They're shut out. Nobody that's lost and unsaved can go into the very presence of God. They're shut out of his presence. They can't go into a prayer. He doesn't listen to it. Uh, are there many pastors and preachers that are lost and bound for hell? Yes. 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 They pray all the time, but does God hear their prayers? No. They may hear them, but they can't go into the very presence. Yeah, Anna. <laughs> the prayer of the <coughs> and the prayer of trusting <coughs> Christ as Savior, then the Lord will hear that. Yes, that's the only prayer he can hear. It's one that says, what must I do to be saved? And I, I want to trust the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Then, then they can hear, but otherwise, silence. All right. So the temple, uh, the veil was rent, as, as Barbara said, top to bottom. Uh, now that isn't the way normally you'd rent a thing, is it? People are on the ground, you want to hit something, usually you start from where you are, but it's very, very serious, but it was rent in God to rent it. And yes, uh, Randy. Well, in Ephesians where it talks about the, uh, the middle wall of partition between us, mm -hmm. Jew and Gentile, is this part of that? Well, maybe so. Middle bar of partition was, was rent also. That could be. It certainly was <laughs> All right. Yes, Pastor Dan? Oh, oh we're just waiting for Okay. So verse 38, we write, we finish that. And then verse 39, uh, who who uh, gets into the picture here? What's the question? Who gets into the picture here in verse 39? The Barbara? The Roman centurion. What is a centurion? What is his office? What is his duty? What, is it, what does he take care of? Nobody so, knows but Barbara? All right, Randy. He's uh, in charge over 100. 100? 100, 100 who? Soldiers. 100 Roman soldiers. That's military right. Military officer. That's right. He's a military officer. And uh, where was the centurion? Where was this centurion? He was a guard. Oh, but where was he now in this verse? Tammy? He was he was standing over against him. Okay, he was very close. <coughs> Who's the hymn referred to? The Lord Jesus Lord Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. He was very close to the cross on which the Lord Jesus was being crucified. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> what did he see and hear? Yeah, Anthony? He saw Jesus cry out and saw him lead the life. Okay. He gave up the so cross. He, was he a died. Witness. He was a witness and saw that he cried out. Now, as I think Barbara said, when you're on the cross and you have problems, you don't necessarily have a strong voice, maybe a weak voice or something, but he saw it. And what's the second thing? He saw that he cried out. What's the second thing? He gave, he saw that he died. Saw that he died, gave up the ghost. And then what was the witness of the centurion? What did he say when he saw and heard these things? Anybody know? Yeah, Only Barbara? Good. Okay, Barbara. Hands up. Barbara, okay. Surely this man was the son of God, and it's it's this man, not the other two, but right. this particular man, and he wasn't just a son of God, he was the particular specified son of the God. The only son of God. So that's a testimony that this centurion, who had seen, I'm sure, many crucifixions, <clears> when he <throat> saw the Lord cry out and give up his life, truly, that means honestly and really, this man was a son of God. What a testimony. Did the other people in Israel? Yes, Tammy. Well, this was after everyone had mocked him and reviled him, and then they had put this, the sign over you know, the king of the Jews, mm -hmm. and then they said, don't write that. And, yeah. and then they had said, come off the cross. Yes. And basically, you know, he accused him of, you know, all sorts of evil. Yes. And, you know, and now, now, this testimony. So it's, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. Yes. Sir. He's, they say he saved others, but he couldn't save himself. That's right. He was able to, but it was not God's will. Yeah, Barbara? It was a Roman centurion. It was a Gentile who yeah. recognized who he was. That's right. Good testimony. Barbara, I mean, Anna? Well, in the fact that he was saving others, because he was saving others, he couldn't save himself because he was saving others instead of That's himself. That's right. He wasn't think of himself. He came through the Father's will. This was the Father's will that he died across the country. And another thing? Yeah, well, Ephesians 2.14, that's where the middle wall of partition is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Could that be a reference to, like, 
you had the court of the Gentiles, and the Gentiles could only come in so far, but then the Jews could go in further. Yeah, could maybe. that be a reference to that? Could, that could be a reference to that, yes. They could open, openly come and, and be saved as well if they trust in Christ to save you. Truly, the Son of God. Let's read 40, 41, and 42 together. There were also women looking on afar off among them, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, the last, and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now, when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, all right, verse number, is it 40? Yeah, 40. Uh, how many women are mentioned in this verse? Yes, that's it. Two. Two? Who were they? Mary Magdalene right. and Mary, the mother of James and uh, Celeste, Josie. And Joseph's son. So there are two and women. Salome. Salome. Yes. Salome. Yes. Salome. 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 Did you say Salome or Salome? Salome. 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 Well, usually Salome, I guess. Salome. That's why you call her. But there's, so there's three women. The two Marys and her. Right. Mary. Mary, the mother of James, James. Celeste. Mary, the mother of... But I thought Mary and of means the mother of the other one, Joseph's and no, Mary Magdalene, Mary, Salome. the mother of James, and, and Salome. Salome. What the comma would make it different, would make it a third it person. It says the mother of three. James. Well, mother of James, the last and of Joseph's, no. and so they got three the, children. No, no, but it no, doesn't no, no. say of huh? Salome. It says it's of Al James and of Joseph's, but not... If, Salome, like Salome would have been her own person. Mary, the mother of James, the last... And of Joseph and Salome. And it doesn't say and of. My Bible says and of. And of Salome. And of Joseph and Salome. Yes, and. Okay, so if you look at James, the mother of James, the last, and of Joseph, so it would seem that it would be of Salome to follow the pattern, but it doesn't say that. The comma and would make it a third person. Grammatically, there's three women there. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother. It doesn't say and jo Joseph and Salome. See, you got to have and, 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 but it says of. Now you see the of is referred to in verse 40. Mary the mother of James the less, the Mary of James and of Joseph. See, you got the and of and of, see? No, no, no. But it's put this in also other many women as well later on in the next verse. Yeah. yeah. And well, many other women which came up with him in Jerusalem. You can Verse hold 41. your own view if you wish. I think there are three. It should be one of them. should be four because there's two other ones. But I'll take the stand of just, just, just for Mary, Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and of Josie. Right, we understand that. Right. But then this Salome makes the third woman. Right. Okay, maybe Salome, and up, maybe, and uh, or could be mother of James the Less okay, and see. of James, James and Solomon. But there's let's no up there. Let's no, but just adding to the thing. Anyhow, forget it. Do you want to take any of your? I just no, asked a simple question. We got a whole lot of answers. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you can listen any way you want to look at. It. Go ahead. You take your book one. I take mine. And in verse 41. Uh, <laughs> Now, who is the one that's from Galilee? In verse 41. Yeah, Annie, you got something else? In Mark 16, <laughs> verse 1, let's compare here. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. So see, in the previous, in, in Mark 15, 40, it says, Mary the mother of James the less and of Josie's. And comma and Salome. So, mm -hmm. but then here just says Mary the mother of James. It doesn't say anything. James what, what the last. What verse? What verse you refer to, Anna? Mark 16:1. 16:1. Oh, okay. Mark. Right, and it doesn't James. say anything about. And so, yes. So, okay. so we got three. You're, you're yeah, right. Three. You're right. There are three. Okay, we got that settled. We go on to the next verse. Yeah. Verse 41. They were. Where did they come from? Yes. What about his mother, Mary? Jesus' mother. Yeah, we we counted her. 
Mary and the other Mary. No, that's wrong. She, 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 she was not here. She was there. there. We, we she was wasn't listed here. We, we know from other passages oh, that she was there, but she wasn't listed. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Les. Okay, they're, they're, they're not the other Mary. You're right. They're supposed to be Magdalene. James Mary, the Les is James the Les. Les. The and of Jesus. Salome, there's so there's three. Half brother of Jesus. Yeah. Is that the half brother of the Lord Jesus? Apparently so. James the and less. James the less, it could be. And Joseph. They got so many James in the Bible. I think it's three or four of James, there's different ones. So whatever this might so be. So it could be Mary. It could be his mother. Well, Mary is the mother of James, and that would be Jesus' mother too. James the less. Unless it's a different well, who's James? James the greater. Well, anyhow, we finally all agree. What are the three women that are there? Mary, 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 That's it. Mary, 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 Mary,
Man means aner means a man, male, male and female. Okay, so 41, letter women, helping him, helping the Lord Jesus Christ. Does he, should he have helpers today? Yes. Yes, yes. the Lord Jesus Christ needs helpers to be faithful to him and to serve him in any way that he sees fit and answers to prayer. And then in verse 42, <clears throat> what was the time of day at this time? Evening. What does the evening mean? Evening. What was that time? We, we talked about that in one of our classes. Yes. Dusk, yes. when the sun goes down. All right. Evening. According to the Jewish time, when does the day begin? Six. Sundown. Six what? A.M. A.M. Day begins at oh, yeah. 6 p.m. It starts at 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. the day before. The day, they, they have to be home before sundown. Right, the Jewish people, yeah. Well, if that's the case, that's, if that's their custom, but uh, the Jewish day began at 6 p.m. the preceding day. When did the Jewish day end? In the morning. <coughs> the, the next day. The next the day. Next the evening and the morning were the first day. But if it began 6 p.m., when did the next day end? And the next day begin? 5, 6, nine. Nine. The next day begins at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. The next day begins at 6 o'clock. P.M. the next day. But, but it, yeah. the yeah. other day ends at 5.59. 5. 59. 59. That, that's right. That's right. And, and, and 59 seconds. See, 59, how, many hours, how many hours are there in a day? 24. 24. So if you had 6 p.m. the one day, 6 p.m. the next day. That's day for day. That's what it is. All right. So even. When, when is the evening then? Okay, let's let's see if the evening is <coughs> just before the next day begins. Is that right? All right, that's a good question. What do you think, Aunt? Randy, you think any idea of that? No. What is the evening? Uh, does it have to be late afternoon or something? I, I'm not Maybe. sure. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, sir. Right before sundown? The usual what we think here, but. Uh, yeah, I, sundown. 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 When does, in a Jewish day, 6 p.m., 6 p.m., when would it be sundown? Depends would it be 6 p.m. the next day, which would be our. It depends on the time of year, too. And, you know, oh, we've got the answer coming. <laughs> 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 sunrises and sunsets. Hello, yes, sir. Go ahead. Who is this? What are they calling you? Who is this? Dale Bloomer from, from Texas. Yes. Go ahead, Dale. Go ahead. Yes, I just want to say that we're really enjoying the Bible study. I want to say hello to everybody. And it sure is good to see Barbara there. Good to see Barbara. Amen. Let's, Hi, wa dear. let's wave to, to wave to Hello, Dale Texas. from Texas. Wave to her. Hello, Texas. Okay, good to see you. All right. I thought I was going to have the answer for that. All right. So now let's take our day. When does our day begin? Now, in the United States of America, when does our day begin? Our day begins. Midnight. Midnight. Okay. All right. Sunrise. Midnight. Well, midnight. Midnight. Our day begins 12 o'clock midnight, one minute after midnight. Okay, and right. that's what our day is. It's called 12 a.m. Same, same answer. 12 a.m., yes, same answer. Now, if our day were this, when would our evening begin? In our days, when would it be? 12 p.m. Normally 6 o'clock. Could be p.m. Depends. Could be evening. Yes, Barbara? That's right. When our evening begins, yes. uh, usually the six-ish, six p.m. in the evening, in oh, six p.m. Uh, well, that's six. six. But our six. day, our, our day, yeah, our yes. evening. I would think that's probably right. Uh, you have to know when the evening begins because when you speak in Spanish, you say hello in Spanish. Got to see whether uh, when is this and how long does the day begin. When is noches? When does that begin? See, you know, you got to know the exactly what they say. <laughs> so, and I, I greet all the Spanish people. I got to always ask them to be sure. All right. So our day, our evening, would be 6 p.m. and so on. Now, if our day is that way, and the Jewish day begins at 6 p.m., PM the preceding day goes 6 p.m. the other day, but it's not dark necessarily. When do you think their evening would be? Okay, Barbara? The Jewish day begins when the first three, the evening, let me start. The Jewish day begins when the first three evening stars come out. When they can validate the first three stars, it is then the beginning of that day for the next 24 hours. And when they disappear, it's gone. It's the next day. Let me ask you a question on that, then we're getting ready. Okay. If you're waiting for stars, it's 6 p.m. over there in Jerusalem. Did the stars come out that early? They're pretty Sometimes. much like we are. Well, but Venus comes out pretty early. Okay. Uh, Tammy, oh, I've got Randy next, and then Tammy, and Dan, and Anthony. 
just by the, the way it's stated, it says then the evening <coughs> and the morning were the first day. Could evening mm -hmm. be first and then the morning? It could be. In other words, well, Genesis chapter one. Mm -hmm. Right. Two so the three. evening is <coughs> the evening is from the six p.m. to what midnight? Midnight to the next change would be morning. The way that's evening and morning. Yeah. Evening and morning. That's uh, possible. That's possible. Uh, what did I say? Pastor Dan? Tammy. Tammy. No, go ahead. I don't want to. Oh, you do? No, I, I don't need to go. After the argument is finished, yes, who's next? <laughs> Chris, so, Jeff, Pastor Dan. <laughs> I would say um, sometimes you do have stars out at 6 o'clock, depending on the time of year. Mm -hmm. I mean, so probably the answer you, you're really looking for is the evening, well, Jewish evening begins at I'm 6. I'm not looking for anything. I just want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Dan. You can't see stars until it's dark. Exactly. Uh, Jeez. Uh, Barbara? You cannot eat the Passover. It is the evening of the preparation. You cannot eat the Passover meal until it's dark. Mm -hmm. So it has to be dark before they can eat. The, the sacrifices had already been made at 3 o'clock, but this was the actual meal that they celebrated before they came out of Egypt. This is the evening of the preparation. Yvonne, and then Al, uh, Bill. The other day, I saw the moon out in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the moon. What did he say? That's the, the moon. moon. But you can see stars, too, in daylight. Yeah, Bill? But I didn't know why the in, moon uh, was out in the morning. In the summer months, uh, it's not dark yeah. until 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Yeah, you're right. Depends whether so, you're the Eastern Standard so, time or uh, daylight time. We're sort of hung up on this one, aren't we? Uh, time of day. Anyhow, whatever it even means, and then you've said different people have different views on it. Uh, then, yeah, it's when the even was come. That's 40, verse 42. Uh, what is the, what was the schedule? What was on uh, on that particular time of day in verse 42? What is the preparation? What is preparation? Preparation, preparation for what? For the Sabbath. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 No, no, wait a minute. Uh, Wait a minute. Yes, Barbara? It was the preparation for the Sabbath, the Passover meal. <clears throat> Passover. So if it's a holy day, remember it says earlier, this was a high day. Now, a lot of churches don't believe that. Believe that when it says Sabbath, they only use weekly Sabbath. No. And, but that's not right. See, it's a holy high day, which is one of the, the feasts of Jehovah. And that's why the Lord Jesus, if we take it the right way, he, he was buried and the Sabbath was coming. It's not Friday and then he raised it on Saturday. But it's a high day, so he's there three days and three nights, as it says very clearly in Matthew, as the days of Jonah, three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So the Son of Man should be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, 72 hours. Yes, Tammy. So did the Lord um, share the Passover with his disciples on the Passover or the day before? On the Passover. Well, it was a, it's a preparation. The day well, before this could the Sabbath. Be the Passover here before yeah. the Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, I was just oh, trying to figure you. out. Because Barbara said this was the, the Passover, the uh -huh. Sabbath. The day before, and if yes. If it was, then they couldn't have had the, the Last That's Supper with the Twelve on the Passover. Well, the, it's apparently Mark doesn't go into a lot of detail there, does he? Yes, John. Uh, Barbara? The Passover was in two stages. The actual sacrifice of the Passover lamb at three, and then the Paschal meal. And this is what they were getting ready for, was the meal. The sacrifice for the sin had already been done. That was taken care of and over with. But you could not eat the Passover meal until you had offered the sacrifice. That was the whole thing about them not going into Pilate's Hall and getting and getting defiled because then they couldn't eat the Passover meal because they couldn't offer their sacrifices. Well, anyhow, verse 42, the time of this was the preparation the day before the Sabbath, before the Passover was finished. It doesn't say anything about the Passover meal. <laughs> Anna? Anna was looking at some. Oh, Anna, go ahead. I didn't see your hand. Go ahead, Anna. As far as the time I see your head, but no hand. I'm still looking at it. Oh, okay. And they right. ate the Pass it seems very clear in Mark chapter 14 that they ate the Passover. And this was the day before this. day before. Yeah. Well, before the Passover. Now I'm getting myself very confused. It's just never before well, the Passover. Well, what I'm saying is this particular section of Mark 
doesn't say anything about this. Simply says the preparation of the day before the Sabbath, and that means a holy day. Pastor Dan? It's apostle to be, uh, Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles to observe it early. No, it's, no, it's not. No. no. It's, um, he had to fulfill the law. It would be, uh, but at what point did he ask John? Did I really have this one? Yes, do you have it? No. Well, anything's possible back then, but... Uh, but as far as, you know, they, there, there was, we have, the, the, there's two things, there's two aspects, there's there, there, there are the two aspects of the um, of the Passover, aren't there? Well... You have the Day of Atonement and you have the Passover. I mean, you have the... Um, unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, rather. You have unleavened bread. I have a bread, then the... And then you have the... Uh, first fruit. Passover. First fruit. But there's, there's a, there's a, be right the day before the Passover yeah. is the unloving bread, is not? Okay. 15, That's a 15 days is unleavened bread, yes. Okay? In Leviticus 23, um, it says on the 14th day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord, and seven days you must eat unleavened bread. It seems as though um, it says in the first day, so this seems like the first day of the uh, feast of unleavened bread, you shall have a holy convocation. So that would be like uh, that would be a Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the last day, I believe, also was a holy convocation. So it would seem like the Sabbath was on the, it may not have been on the Passover, it was on the first day of unleavened bread, which was the next, the next day after that. Uh, Anna? Mm -hmm. I saw your hand. Yeah, well, I can't you retracted your hand? <laughs> hand retracted, okay. Now, all I'm saying is, this particular verse and section of Mark does not say anything about the actual feast and so forth. That's taken up elsewhere, but it does say the time of this was even. We don't know what even meant. We have different views on that. It was the preparation uh, at the day before the Sabbath, whatever Sabbath it was, whatever holy day, the day before. Now, we read 40, 41, 42. Let's read 43, 44, and 45 together. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable oh, counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled that he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had already been dead. And, while, and when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. All right, in verse 43, what sort of man was this, Joseph? He was rich. Yes. Barbara? He was the third richest man in Jerusalem. Well, at least here in the text, what does it say? Yes, dance it. Honorable, honorable counselor. counselor. What does honorable mean? Very respect, good. Respect, Very respected good. and honorable. Had a, had a station. And what does it mean uh, to be a counselor? What is a counselor? No, what, nobody but Anthony has got his hand up? Yes, Antoinette. An attorney. attorney? Well, Somebody could, knows could, the law. Yeah, that way, that he's like an attorney. He gives counsel to somebody. Wants advice. They, he counsels them, tells them what to do, what not to do. Do counsels always give good advice? No. no. Sometimes they give very bad advice. Yeah. They yes. sure do. Be careful. Who's your counsel? Don't take the bad advice. <laughs> Tell me. I believe he was part of the Sanhedrin. Probably part of the Sanhedrin. That's there right. There was a passage in John. Yes. Um, where it talks about they did not all confess him. Mm -hmm. Because they're of the Jews, they're afraid of the Jews. It seems right. like his name is listed. Who is Joseph waiting for in this verse? Just one hand? Nobody else knows? That's your hand. The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God in Scripture here in the New Testament? The kingdom of what? The kingdom of God. Oh. Yes, after that. It's heaven. Well, that could be. But on earth in the book of Matthew, what is it? Oh, the, the, body, the body of Christ. Well, no. What are you asking? I lost what is the kingdom of God in the New Testament Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke? Pat to that. 1,000 year millennium. The kingdom of God. That's one thing. The kingdom, kingdom, I mean, you've covered, I mean, sometimes. Well, sometimes kingdom of God, sometimes kingdom of heaven. It's heaven. 
Like in John chapter 3, mm-hmm. except the man be born again cannot enter the kingdom of God. So sometimes, like in the book of John, it's, it's a saved, saved uh, salvation state. That's true. But in Matthew, you have the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, different kingdoms. And what is the general interpretation of the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God? What's the general interpretation of those two things? The kingdom of heaven is the millennial reign. The kingdom of heaven is the millennial reign, where the real heaven of the Lord Jesus Christ is reigning and ruling. Where is he going to reign and rule? Where, where is that from? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That's right. And that rule is called generally by a lot of commentators, kingdom of heaven. And what is the idea they have for the kingdom of God? Saved, Those would be saved like in John chapter 3, uh, talking to Nicodemus that had to be saved. Set the man be born again. He cannot see he the kingdom of God. So, anyway, uh, he was waiting for the king. So, what does that indicate if he's waiting for the kingdom of God? Whatever meaning you take, what does that mean of him? He was a spiritual man. What's the question? He's a spiritual man. What does that mean, waiting for the kingdom of God? For him to, uh, my wife said he was a spiritual man, right, Barbara? The salvation of Israel. Well, no, what does that mean concerning Well, this he man? was waiting for the Messiah. Waiting for the Messiah. What does that mean as far as his faith and belief, Bob? Huh? He was uh, waiting for to go to heaven, I guess. What? what let, yes, after that. He was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He certainly must have been. In other words, he was a faithful man. wasn't an apostate, wasn't a doubter, an unbeliever. Uh, that's, he was waiting for something that God had planned. Whatever his idea was, the kingdom of God, he was waiting for it. He believed in it. So he was a faithful man. One of some kind of. So what did he do in verse 43? What did Joseph do here? Yes, Antoinette? He went to talk to Pilate. Okay, who was Pilate? He was the chief judge. The governor. Yeah, governor. Hans? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. He was the governor. Uh, the governor. And, uh, the Roman governor. Roman governor, that's right. And what was his way of entrance to Pilate? What was his way of entrance by his entrance? Boldly. What does that mean? Determined. Determined? Yes. Yeah, Barbara? Courage. It, it took Cor- courage. Took courage? In other, words, he wasn't, in other words, he was not a shy person. He was boldly entered. And... What was his request of Pilate, the governor of Rome? Matt Vaughn? I think uh, Joseph Arimathea was used to being with big wigs. Probably. So he went in without, he wasn't afraid. All right. And what did I ask in the last one? What did he want of Pilate? The body what did he ask? of Christ. The body Divine. of Christ. What does is, what is crave mean? He really wanted him. Yeah. What does crave mean? He was anxious, wanted him. Desperately wanted. Earnestly requested. Desperately wanted. Okay. Uh, the body. Oh, that. No, oh, I have forgotten what I was going to oh, say. Oh, sometimes we have senior moments. Oh, All right. No, I knew what I was going to say, but then I never, never mind. So okay. Oh, all right. All right. So, why did Joseph no. think crave the body of Christ? Why did he crave it? Why did he crave it? Nobody knows? What's the question? Why do you think he craved the body of Christ? Antoinette had a hand up. Because he wanted to um, be able to take care of it. All right. Cass? Well, same thing. He loved Jesus. And mm-hmm. He wanted to make sure you know, that he was buried mm-hmm. right. Properly. He, did he go to the right person to ask the question? Yes. yes. Where did he go to again? Pilate, the Roman governor, and he craved the body of Christ. And then in verse, did we read 44? Did we read 44? Yes. We did? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Bill always knows what we read, so he's, he's good at it. And so what was Pilate's attitude when this Joseph came to him boldly? He marveled. What does that mean to marvel? I don't know. Like surprised. Surprised? surprised? Yeah. Wondered. 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 Surprised? Wondered. And... What did Pilate wonder? That Jesus was good. Robert, hands, that, hands, only one hand. That he, that Jesus had already died because it only took a couple days. Oh yeah, he couldn't believe that he was dead already. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Uh, he, he wondered if you're already dead. What does that imply? I think someone already said it, but Sue, well, already. That he was that he had that it had happened. So that's so that quickly, so quickly. Yeah. That's right. And uh, 
So what did Pilate, did Pilate originally believe that he was dead already? Did he originally no, believe? No. Why do we know? Why do we know? Hands up, who's next? Sorry. What's the next verse? What's the verse say? Nobody knows if it's Barbara? Why Barbara? Well, he didn't, anticipate, he didn't anticipate him being dead already. All right. Yes, Sue? He, he asked for the centurion to verify All it. All right. <laughs> so he did doubt it. He wanted to be sure. He wasn't going to do anything that he was sure of what this man requested. Uh, again, who's the centurion? How many men? Under him? Under men, under him. And uh, he asked. What did he ask? What question did he ask the centurion? His pilot. What did, ask, what, did, what did the pilot ask? How long has he been dead? All right. How long has he been dead? Yeah, Barbara had something? Um, the centurion was a Roman. Pilate didn't believe Joseph. He had to go get Roman, uh, someone in Roman authority who mm -hmm. would confirm what Joseph had said. All right. That's true. Did we read 45? Mm -hmm. Well, did we read yeah, 45? We okay. So in 45, who's the he referred to in verse 45? When he... Pilate. Pilate. When Pilate knew of the centurion, what did he then do? What did Pilate do then? The body gave the body to Joseph. All right. He gave the body to Joseph. Which Joseph? Are we Joseph of Arimathea. Okay. In verse 43. Okay, then we, we didn't read uh, just 45. Let's read 46 and 47 together. And he bought the fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in the sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone into the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he was laid. How many women in verse 47? Two. We got that straight. <laughs> Two, okay. No comments. I, I was wrong on the first one. I'm right on this one. Okay, we all agree on this one. Okay, so verse 46. Who is the he referred to here? Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, remember, he bought. Must have cost a lot of money. Was it just ordinary cloth? What kind of cloth was it? And it would have come out of Egypt. Because uh -huh. that's where all the, all the linen came yes. from. And fine linen is, even this day and age, is extremely, extremely expensive. Very expensive. And what else did Joseph of Arimathea do in verse 46? Right, Bob? He took the body of Jesus. He took him down. It's what does that mean, took him down? Did he take him off the cross? What does it mean? Well, what do you think? That's the question. What do you think? He took him off, he got him down, and then he took the body to the uh, tomb. Okay. If somebody's taken down, what was he before he was taken down? He was on the cross. He was up. He was up. <laughs> so, take it down from the cross. That's right. That's really something. You have to take all the nails out, all different things. It would be a horrible situation, but he... One of that body, yeah, Bob. Do you think they take the body down before they lower the cross? Do they ever lower the cross I, I and take know. the body down? If, if they lower the cross flat, horizontal, and they just you wouldn't take him down. So it seemed like you have, have to be up and put him down. up there and get him down? I would think so. Yeah, but but didn't, the mm -hmm. yes. didn't the Roman soldiers took, took him down? Well, of course, here it says Joseph took him down. Mm -hmm. he, he went up on a ladder to take Jesus well, I, down. I, I don't know how he went up yeah, Barbara. If Pilate had talked to the centurion and had given his permission for Joseph to take the body, the centurion mm -hmm. and company would have taken his yeah. body down mm -hmm. for Joseph to do whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But according to verse 45 uh, and 46, uh, Who's who's the one that bought the fried, fine linen? Joseph. 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 And who's That's the one that took him down? Joseph. Okay, so it wasn't centurion. Or yeah. this verse, it was Joseph. It could be figurative. And uh, what else did Joseph do? He wrapped him. He wrapped him. He, he and then put, laid him in the. All right, that's the next thing. Sword. But he wrapped him in what linen was that? The fine, the the fine, fine linen, linen that he had bought. Yeah, huh? It seems like Joseph would have to have help to get. A body, a dead, dead weighted body. Maybe, maybe he had some help. I don't, uh, I mean, Henry. In John chapter 20, verse 38, mm -hmm. and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, mm -hmm. but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. 
He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen, in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Mm -hmm. So up above that last verse you read, it says something about they took him out. What does that say? Did Joseph take him out? What's your context there? Then took they the body of Jesus. No, but before that, a couple oh. of verses before that, Sam. Okay. <coughs> All right, for Pilate that he might take away, and there. Okay, he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. That was that was that Joseph. was Joseph. Okay, so they yeah. took him. So in this verse here, so they took him down. So he took him, took him down. Yes, Anna. So I was looking. Well, I'm, in this passage, Mark, it says in verse forty-five of chapter fifteen, and when he knew it of a centurion, he gave the body to Joseph, and then. In Matthew 27:58, he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like perhaps, perhaps when it says took him down, maybe because it was on a hill, wasn't it? it was on was it Golgotha? Golgotha. Mm -hmm. Hill. So maybe he took him down the hill, and the so he had he had to go down towards the sepulchre. They go down to get to the sepulchre, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But we still have to explain verse 46 in Mark, and <coughs> took him down. Who's the hymn referred to? Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, that's right. And wrapped him. Yeah, and then, and finally, and then what did he do after that? In the sepulchre. What was the sepulchre like? It was a yes. tomb. Yeah. It was a cave. Okay, right, yeah, Barbara. Oh, Wait. excuse me, cash, I forget. It was brand new, I don't think anyone ever laid it. Okay, what kind of tomb was it? Yes, so, after that? It was a mausoleum. Well, what kind no, of tomb was it, Barbara? It was all stone. It was all it was stone. stone. It was right? carved out of the rock. Okay. What they did was, is there was a huge room that they laid the body on for a year for it to decay, and then they took, came in a year later and put the bones in an ossuary. Mm hmm. And what else did they do after he hewed out? This, the sepulchre, which was hewn out of a rock, and what else did Joseph do? <laughs> yes. Did he put spices down for the body, well, like spices? It doesn't say that. This for here, but uh, Cass. He uh, hewed out the rock, or uh, rolled the stone into the door of the sepulchre. Okay. What was the custom of closing sepulchres in those days? A round thing that rolled they, along. They rolled along. It had a, a rut like it was in a, a track. Like a track, and it was a sort of a flat stone. It must have been strong, too. Rolled a stone. Mm -hmm. See, this is all said of Joseph, all these things. So, must have been a strong man as well as a counselor and honorable. Didn't, yes. he, didn't he have help? Jo well, it could be, but he was in charge because he says he did yeah. it. So, he was in charge. Whoever helped him doesn't say, but. He did, he engineered it and did yes, what? When we were in Jerusalem and everything, and when they took us to what they, what their view of the grave was, mm -hmm. which was near... Golgotha? Yeah. Near Golgotha. Yeah, and, and it's, I think Golgotha was across the street. It was like a, a train station or a gasoline That's station. That's right, mm -hmm. It wasn't on a big hill or anything. No. But... Uh, but Golgotha was, remember, that's where the bus station was down here and up, up oh, here. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. we were on yeah. top hill. But uh, there was there was this uh, like stone bed mm -hmm. that they said the body would, would lay mm -hmm. on, and I don't know if there was room for two or not. I can't remember. One on the other side. No, do you I, remember? That's I don't remember. But in this particular place, it doesn't say. But in other gospels, when the Lord Jesus rose from the dead bodily, what does it say about the stone? It's rolled away. It's rolled away, and. Who, what was the reason for it being rolled away? And what hands? Yes? Tell me Jesus comes out on, in, I don't like three understand. days later. What was the reason it said it was rolled away? So did, people could get in. Did he have to have it rolled away to get out? No. Yeah. no. Why? So he could go so through doors and stuff. He could go through elements. That's right. What is another instance where he went through elements? 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Is your, is your but then when it says in, to... I'm imagining like you're placed in, in a coffin. Now you're in, in the room. room. In, the, in, the room. in the room. In the room. But they meant, okay. See, for instance, if this were the Hewn Rock Sepulchre, this in whole room. In meaning sepulchre, meaning the whole Antoinette. Like, a mausoleum. Right. Antoinette, if this were the Sorry. whole room, the whole sepulchre, they just brought him into this room. That's what it means. Okay. Put him in this, this room, okay. in the sepulchre there. Any other comments or questions before we call it? Why right, let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for these verses that we've been going over. We thank Thee, Lord, that there were interest at Calvary. We thank the Lord Jesus did not say, no, I don't want to go. He asked the Father, would Thou remove this cup from me? And the Father seemed to indicate no. He says, I therefore will, not my will, but Thine be done. We thank Thee for His willingness to die on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the whole world, not simply some elect people, but the whole world, that by faith in him, they can be saved and have everlasting life. We thank you for these women, uh, three in one place and two in another, different times. These women were interested. They ministered to him. They took care of him while he was here on this earth. I'm sure they were very sad to see his death. We're glad that some of them at least saw his resurrection. We're glad for that. We're glad that they were interested. Help us to be interested in our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Help us to follow him closely, like the disciples sometimes did and sometimes didn't. Keep us faithful to our Savior. Bring us back safely on Thursday for Bible study and prayer service. We thank thee for those that are here. Continue to guide us and use us. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you for coming.